Okay. Hi, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, no, no, no. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. There you go. There we go. Thank you again for that wonderful introduction, Nancy. And um, just for FYI, I'm kind of pinch hitting this morning, so you'll have to pardon me if I have notes with myself because um, I didn't know I was going to be speaking until yesterday. So it's a <laughs> kind of a, a bit of an improv, but not to worry because I also did this talk earlier this week for a group of about 45 realtors as well um, in order to help them increase their business. So let me just give you a little bit of background on myself, only because you're probably wondering what is this young woman doing standing in front of there telling me what to do when I've been in this game for about 30 years now, I'm guessing, for some of you. No? Okay. Anyway, my name is Camille Soler. Um, I am a creative director for a place called The Think Tank. We are a collaborative workspace for real estate entrepreneurs. So on a day-to-day -day basis, I work with real estate investors. I work with mortgage, lending, finance, real estate brokers, architects, contractors, anyone that does anything when it comes to property management and real estate, building homes, finding ways to invest in the community, I get to work with them on a daily basis. Now I've been doing work with entrepreneurs and early stage companies for about 10 years now, and my big focus has always been on marketing, brand strategy and activation, and authentic leadership and communication building. But at the end of the day, what it really boils down to is how many more people can you serve with what you do on an everyday basis? So show of hands, how many of you here are realtors and brokers? Oh. And how many of you are in the mortgage lending and finance industry? Title or escrow? Are they all outside? Not in that room. Okay. <laughs> Awesome. And I just wanted to get a feel for how many of you here start your year off knowing what your marketing strategy is going to be for your own personal business and for your company and organization? Okay, that, that's usually what I figure. And how many of you feel that marketing is kind of important in this industry? Okay, so there, there's kind of a disconnect there. So what I plan to do today, the title of my talk and the workshop, and it's gonna be a bit of a brainstorming with you all, is called Two-Step Marketing in order to make your sales process more effective. So before we get started, what I would like to do is, um, I'm a little different, so you're gonna to have to bear with me. We're gonna do a little exercise with one another. I'm gonna have you pick somebody, just partner up, two people, and I want you to ask one another, so one person, Person A, ask person B, why are you here, and what is your goal for being here this morning? Then talk for a couple minutes, and then I want person B to ask person A the exact same question. Again, why are you here, and what is your goal for being at this meeting this morning? So take a couple minutes, partner up, find somebody, ideally somebody you don't know, and please go ahead and ask them. I'll check in with you in just a few.
All right, and if you have already, make sure you switch. So I hope no one person is dominating the conversation. Make sure that the other person gets a chance to talk as well. So if the other person hasn't talked, please do ask them that question. totally going to call on some folks right now. Okay, you got pointed out, so I'm just going to go over in this direction. Um, My name's Lee. I Lee? spoke to Jennifer. Okay. And, and Jennifer's a new agent. She's only been in the business for three months. And uh, so it was, it was interesting to talk to her. Okay. Uh, so what did, what did Lee, and, and yeah, her, what did Jennifer say about why she's here and what her goal is? Uh, she, she was really kind of like clear of the process, and I think there's a... a in all fairness, communication perhaps oh. struggle a little bit. But uh, anyway, she's she's here to get into the business. To uh, I think she's I may be putting words in her mouth, but I think she's been told you know you should go to these. <laughs> okay, well, so that's how we all start. Okay, well, and it sounds like you're here because you were advised to be here by other individuals who obviously have been in the industry for a long time. And she wants to. And she wants to be here. She wants to be successful. Absolutely. Well, you came on the good day because then I'm here to talk to you too. So, or stuff. Um, well, thank you, Lee and Jennifer. Uh, what did what what is Lee's reason for being here and his goal? Did he mention it? Did you get to talk at all? We talked a little bit. Okay. I, and I'll tell you. My, sure, sure. My reason was to uh, to come and network and and really see what's going on. Okay. The new, new property wise and. Uh, and the, have a meeting afterwards too. So. Okay. So the two things I got from Lee here were that he wants to build a network, which essentially means creating relationships, right? And uh, new properties. So you're looking for information, ways and information, things that'll help you increase your business and serve more people and help more people. Perfect. Thank you. Can we give a round of applause to Lee and Jennifer for the presentation for being here? Thank you. Okay, so the reason that I wanted to do this exercise is because this is already a process that's gonna help you double and increase your business just by asking questions with your clients. So I'm gonna encourage you all to take some notes today. Um, it's actually the CEO of eBay, John Donahue, if you're familiar with him, who would always say that actually the leaders sitting in front of Silicon Valley in the front rows who do the best and make the most money are the, actually the ones taking notes from the speakers for standing there. So I don't know how true that is in statistics, but I'm just gonna trust him because I'm pretty sure he does well with his life. So I'll encourage you all to take some notes today, but here's our big magic formula and our theme. I'm calling it two by two by two. So we're gonna do two-step marketing, we're gonna do a two-step process close, and this will two times your business guarantee. And what do I mean by that? Well. It's just kind of like when you work out and you have a trainer, right? He can give you the, he or she can give you the workout regimen. They can tell you what nutrition to take every day. Now it's really up to you to implement that. But if you're not consistent, please don't come back to me in two months and say, hey, well, I didn't lose the five to 10 pounds that you guaranteed. <laughs> oh, why not? Um, did you follow my regimen? Yeah, uh, for like two weeks. And then, you know, I had a birthday party and then it, it got really hectic. So I kind of stopped, you know, working out. But then I got back on it by, by about week four. Okay, what happened then? Well, I had already gained two pounds by then, and then I had to get back on it. So there's a lot of inconsistency. And I feel like a lot of the times we go to these seminars, we go to these workshops, and we hear all these great things, we got our wheels turning, we're going, we all have these notes, and we're gung-ho for about a week. And then week two rolls around, and you kind of go back into your regular regimen again. By the time week three comes, you're so discouraged, you're back to your old routine, and nothing's changed. So I hope that today will be a game changer for you all, if you need it. If you don't, then you're just kind of here to hear me and drink your coffee, which is fine too. So let's get going with step one. This is gonna be two-step marketing. 
All two-step marketing is, is step one, is generate the lead. Step two is promise what you delivered in generating that lead and make the close. Very simple. That's already the beginning of those of you who didn't have a marketing strategy at the beginning of the year. I just gave it to you. Do two-step marketing. Generate the lead, close the sale. But you're like, Camille, that's, that's super simple. You could have taught me that my first year of college. Yeah, absolutely, but I'm giving you the framework for how it should get done. So how do you generate the lead? Who here actually does postcard mailers, just listed mailers, flyers, uh, email marketing? Anybody at all? Okay, I got a couple. Anyone on social media? <laughs> yeah, a couple in the back. How else do you generate leads? So what you put into this is what you're gonna get out of this, so you gotta help me out here. What else do you all do to advertise your business and do marketing and generate leads for yourself? Things that work for you. Don't tell me things that don't work. Anything? Just postcard mailers and social media. Yes, sir. Personal contact is the best way. Personal contact. You can't beat it. But and I use social media, I use direct mail, and my referrals from my other clients. Referrals, okay. What was your name? Bob Bodkin. Bob, thank you, Bob. So personal referrals and social media and just contacting them directly. Right. Okay. Now, how do you get those personal contacts? Is it through leads that you can I go through? through 2,000 cards a year. Look at you, you hustle. And yeah. Meet people. Good. Yeah. Who is John Galt? John Galt. Can you answer that question? No, I can't. You haven't seen the movie. No, I haven't, <laughs> but you can recommend it to us. What was that, John Galt? Atlas Shrugs. Atlas Shrugs. And there's three movies. The book was written in 1955 about our government today and government intervention, but it's all about making money. Mm, interesting. Well, you'll have to talk to me about that afterwards. <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you. Who else? What else do you do to generate leads? Yes? Post to sales service. I'm sorry, say that more? Post to sales service. Post to sales service. Is that what you said? Yes. Okay, and what is that? Well, after the, the, the deal done, mm -hmm. keep this, the communications and then keep to sending them for what they need. Okay. So it's been not one deal done and then you get off it. So keep the relationship. Keep the relationship. Keep help them. Consistent. Okay. Your name is? Helen. Helen. Thank you, Helen. So what Helen said, if, for those of you who didn't hear, was that post to sale service. So keeping that relationship going even after the sale is done. So one of the things that sometimes we forget is we're real estate professionals. Oh, yeah, we just sell homes. We buy homes. That's it. For a lot of us who, and I'm going to speak on my behalf, I'm not a real estate professional. I'm in the marketing industry working with real estate entrepreneurs. But as a consumer, I'm the millennial, I'm the millennial you want to target. Because I'm the one who's going to buy the home and tell you, like, no, you're not just buying me a home. This is where I'm going to make my stories. This is where I make my family. This is probably going to be the biggest investment I make in my life from my heart or money. And you all are responsible for that. So yeah, you're right, John. The, the goal is to make money, but you have such a you have a much deeper purpose, essentially, is what I'm saying. And so by taking these two-step marketing and the two-step process close seriously, you don't realize the impact that you actually have on our lives. And, but I do hope that you do understand that, right? So a couple ideas that I heard from the other realtors that I was at, at the Northeast LA Collective, was just listed postcards, personal referrals, door knocking, open houses, multi-touch programs, calling them personally, doing events, doing seminars at your office, doing networking gatherings, social media, having a landing page, having a good website. Where, where do I go to find out who I'm supposed to look for? My phone and your website. If you don't have something that's kind of up to date, it doesn't have to be fancy, but I'm gonna think that your credibility is somewhat low. So thinking about these things, these should all be part of how you generate leads. Step two, okay, cool, you generated the lead, now what? So I'm going to give you a, I'm sorry, what was follow, up. follow up, absolutely. How many of you have a program, a strategy for following up? Like you're consistent, you know exactly how it goes. Within 24 hours, I'm hitting them up. Within 48 hours, I'm hitting them up. I'm automating it. Anyone? Awesome, in the back. Way to go. <laughs> we got one person. You should all be doing that so you're not killing yourselves all day, every day, and you're able to serve more people. Now I'm gonna give you just a really, really quick story, a success story. So I was working with one of my mortgage lending clients and we were doing the typical, like go to a realtor's office, try to win over the business. Um, they were doing the buddy-buddy sell, having the good relationship. Hey, you golf, I golf too, da 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 And it seemed like everything was going great, but what he started to notice was this pattern of, hey, I'm getting these great relationships, but I'm not actually closing deals. Where's the disconnect here? 
So I switched up the game for him. I said, hey, try this two-step sales process. And we're going to get to that right after the story. So I said, okay, now go to the meeting. These are the questions I want you to ask. Just listen. Then do the follow-up meeting. Be specific. Set it up for a week later. Do this worksheet with them, talking about the questions that you ask them. <clears throat> and it was so crazy. After about three or four meetings, back to back, he was able to lock in about 12 referrals. And he was able to get all these relationships built with every single richer that he met with. So why does that matter to you? It's the same thing when you're working with clients, you're getting new clients, you're getting the first time home buyer, or you're trying to partner and do a relationship with a direct lender or an investor and you want to win over that business. We're all human, we work the same way. So this stuff does work, but you gotta be consistent with it. So in your marketing pieces, I'm just gonna give you six quick things that you should always have in really, really good marketing ads that have worked for me, that have worked for the clients that I've worked for. Number one, don't sell. Don't do the hard sell. Don't say like, hey, buy a home with me now. That does nothing for me when I see that in the mail. What you wanna do is you wanna create interest. Hey, looking to find a way to pay for your college, your child's college tuition this summer? Find out how much equity you have in your home. Contact me today for a free home analysis. Figure out what the problem is that they have and then give them a solution to that. So that's number two, is you want to advertise benefits and solutions. Find out what is the problem in their life that you can solve. That's your job. You're a problem solver. You can impact lives tremendously just by the work that you do because I'll give you an example. My mother is a single mom who's been a nurse for over 35 years. She knows nothing when it comes to finance and real estate. She's got burned over by how many realtors, I can't even tell you, and it broke my heart every single time why? Because that was her hard-earned money. That was her overtime. That was her night shift. And all these folks were just trying to get their commission, but they weren't really guiding her into what she needed to do. They weren't giving her the solutions to her problems. And then now we're working all these years to fix that. But you can change that. You can actually have a really positive impact on these people's lives who trust you with the biggest investment that they're going to make. And you can create that solution for them. So it's gonna, it's gonna speak volumes when you put in your marketing pieces, look, these are the, these are the problems I know you have in your life because my friends, my family, my colleagues have experienced it and I'm smart enough, I'm experienced enough and I've got a big enough heart to let you know like I can actually serve you and give you these solutions. It will have a vastly different tone in your own marketing and branding, guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Number three, Make your contact information convenient. I can't tell you how many ad pieces I run through and I can't find their phone number. I can't find their email address on the marketing piece. You got this huge picture of a realtor standing like this saying, hey, buy a house with me. And they're huge on the poster. And where's their contact information? You've lost my attention in like 2.5 seconds if I can't figure out a way to contact you. So my suggestion, whatever you start to go to print with, whatever you put online, make your contact information as large as possible, as bold as possible, and only do two ways to contact you. Less is more. Do a phone number, do an email address. That's it. By human nature, people respond when they have less choices. If you give me two things to pick from, I'm more likely to pick one, as opposed to if you give me 15, I'll get overwhelmed and I'm like, forget it. I won't make any action. So think about that next time you work on something and you're teaming up with your marketing department or your consultant or just your niece or a nephew that you hired to do your social media, think about things like that. Number four, as we talked about, follow up with a sale. If you can't get to it all because your business is so big, look at autoresponders. Look into email autoresponding. Look into phone call autoresponding. Just so that there's a point of contact immediately as soon as a person contacts you. What do I mean by that? Camille Soler wants to work with John. I sent him an email from this marketing piece that he gave me and I don't hear back from him for three days. Understandably, he's super busy. But if he set up an email autoresponder so that every time I email him, there's just an immediate like, hey, thanks so much for contacting me. I'll be sure to get back to you within 24 hours. At least I feel better because I was recognized. That's just basic human nature. Number five, and this is not for everyone, but for those of you who have bigger budgets, test and track your marketing. If you're gonna do a marketing piece, actually see how much business you get from it so that you can make more educated decisions next year and spend your money wisely to see, hey, this worked, this didn't work. But I think a lot of us, what we do is we just sort of reinvent the wheel every single year. That's not a smart way to do business. Every great business grows well because they know how to scale. You put out the sandbags before the tsunami hits. 
But if the tsunami is coming at you and you're throwing sandbags all around, it's going to be really hard to deal with all that water coming in. And what I mean by water coming in, that's going to be your profits. That's going to be your clients. I want you to become inundated with helping more and more people and getting more money in your pocket. But you got to be prepared for it. Because otherwise, you're just going to work yourself to the ground. And that's what a good marketing strategy does. It prepares you for that tsunami. A good tsunami, though. Make sense so far? Are we all? Last one, be consistent, like I said. Just like with any workout regimen, you're not going to get the six-pack abs if you're doing three sit-ups every other day or something like that. I need you to be consistent. All right. So lastly, the, the two by two, so the closing the sale. There are two main steps to closing any sale. Now, you generated the lead. You're sitting down in the one-on-one -on -one meeting with Camille. How do you actually close the sale with this client? How do you build the relationship with this lender, this direct lender, these investors that you know, want to do all these new builds in La Cacata, and you could be the realtor or the broker to represent them? Two things need to happen, and I call this method, number one, shut up. <laughs> Just shut up and listen to people. So the main thing we like to do is we like to talk. We're salespeople, that's what we do, right? Talk, 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 talk. Hey, this is what I can do for you. This is how I close. You know, blah, 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 blah. I know this area. I've been doing it for 20 years. And that's great. But when do you actually just sit there and listen and ask all the right questions? I literally have a, have a list of about 10 to 15 questions. And only five of those are used when my clients actually sit down with a client. They work every time. And what are those questions? Very simple, what we did before we all got started today. You sat down next to somebody and you asked them, hey, why are you here? What are your goals for being here? What are the top five things that you look for when you work with a realtor or a broker? And before you leave that meeting, you should definitely ask, now what's a deal killer? What is going to break this deal that you just don't want this ever when you work with a realtor or broker? And I don't want you to say anything. You probably will know half of the things that they say, but no one cares how much you know until what? They know how much you care, right? And how do they know that you care? You ask. How good does it feel when somebody comes up to you and they say, hey, Lee, how's your day going? How, how, how's business coming along? Did you, you know, were you able to make those network connections that we talked about last week at the, um, at the caravan? As opposed to me just going up to him and saying like, hey, you know, I close all these new deals. We should really do business together. Um, blah, 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 me, 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 me. Your clients don't want to hear about you. They want to talk about themselves. People love talking about themselves. So that's what I need you to do is be quiet and ask questions. You would be shocked at what you really find out about what their wants, needs, and goals are. Then what I want you to do is set up the next meeting. So number two is be specific. That's all you got to do. Shut up, listen to what the problems are, be specific. What do I mean by that? Follow up with the meeting for the next week. So, you know, Lee, um, it was really great getting to hear what it is that you wanted to um, do. Now I really know what you want in a realtor, what your goals are for this situation, and take notes as people are talking. That's really, really powerful because it shows that you're really taking it seriously. And then you say, how about um, we meet up again? Let's, I want to propose some solutions to you, how I really think I can help you address all these needs that you have. How about next Wednesday at 9 a.m.? How does that work for you? Give them very, very specific choices. Always close a meeting with a date and a time. Never leave it open-ended. Well, let's get together sometime next week. You know, I'll get in touch with you. You've lost it already. About 50% of your chance for closing that sale is already gone. But if you give people a yes or no, they'll pick something. So they'll probably be like, oh, well, you know, Wednesday doesn't work. Okay, well, how about Thursday? Would that work? Okay, let's do Thursday. Meeting two, that's when I want you to talk. That's when I want your magical salesperson powers to come in, and you go through the solutions that you're going to propose to those problems. So again, number one, be quiet and listen in meeting one with the client, the lender, the partner, the investor. Take notes. Think about solutions. And then when you make a very specific date for meeting number two, close it by saying, hey, this is what you said you wanted. This is what you said you needed. I want to earn your business but I want to do it the right way. So these are the solutions I can provide to you. That's being really specific. If you can just do those two things, 
guaranteed you're going to have such better relationships with people and you're going to feel less frustrated trying to figure out why can't I close it? I, I thought it was a good relationship. No, but you're actually making specific steps to solve whatever problems they have. And at the end of the day, it's always about them, never about you. And pretty much, that's gonna wrap up a very bird's eye view of what I call the two-step marketing and the two-step sales close process. They, we can go really, really deep into this, but I wanna honor your time, because I know you got a really busy day. But, <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, but if you have any questions, um, I'll, I'll be sure to leave my contact information here with uh, Nancy, but I um, just wanted to leave you with this note. I wake up every single day asking myself, how can I better serve people? And I feel really, really blessed that I got called in this morning to be able to serve you all. And I truly hope that maybe I help generate some ideas or get you going on a path that might change your business for growth in a more positive way. So um, blessings to you all and have a good month. Thank you. Thank you.